Hi, this is going to be Sample Lab 6, Analytical and Multisim. First thing we need to do is find the truth table and the Boolean expression for this circuit. Now we've got A, S, and D as inputs, and then we've got two different outputs. So there's this one over here and this one over there. So this is like LED 1 and resistor 1, the voltage across that and current through this thing. And then uh, same thing for number 2 over there. All right, so I'm going to start off with the Boolean expression. And what I would do is just like write directly on the page. Now, to do this with a computer is a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if you had a pen and paper, but we're going to we're going to deal with it anyway. So uh, with the with the paint program here, with paint.net that I'm using, it's a little bit hard to type an overbar like I would normally do with math type. So here, I'm just going to use an exclamation mark for not. So since we've got D tied to both inputs of this NAND gate, we're just nodding it, and exclamation mark D is going to be not D. OK, so then up here, we've got not S, and then we've got a NAND between the two inputs, which would be A and not S. And then De Morgan's law will tell us that this is not A or not not S, which is S. Great. Then down here, we can get one of the outputs right away. So this is not not S and not D from the NAND, which equals S or D. And that's one of the outputs. Perfect. Now, look at this. We've got a NAND gate between this and this, and then we're going to knot that. So together, that's just an AND gate, and that'll be not A or S, ANDed with S or D, and then together, that is, let's see, let's do some FOIL here, not A times S, um, or not A and D, or uh, S and S, or S and D. Ooh, out of space. Better move that over a bit. Now, we don't actually need a lot of these expressions because all the ones that have an S in them, so this like not A and S, the and the S and D, and the S and S together, since we're oring them, those ones all require S to be true for them to be true. And if S is true, then the whole thing's going to be true because we're we have an S and S in this OR expression. So we don't need those other ones with S in it. And we can just say that this is not a, whoops. Um, hmm. That's uh, it's kind of annoying. Uh, all right. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah. So we're going to be ending this one with this. Let's see. Not A or S. S or D. This is a good recap. So yeah, we're only going to need the S expressions besides the not A and D. So that ends up being not A and D or S. Great. And we're all we're all with it. So the other ones that we're going to get are these X, S and not A and S and D, but those don't matter compared to just S by itself when we're oring them together. All right. So there we go. There is the uh, Boolean expression for this output, not A and D, or S, and S or D for the other one. So let's see if we can copy that in. Yeah, all right, that's all right. So then the Boolean expression is uh, S or D for, let's call that Y1, and Y2 equals we can even work that out again here with the bars to make that a little bit more clear. A bar or S and S or D, which is equal to A bar S or A bar D or SS or SD. And that's just A bar D or S. Great. Okay, so there's our Boolean expressions. Cool. So now let's try to make a truth table. Uh, once you have the Boolean expression, it's pretty easy to make the truth table. But let's suppose that we don't have that and we want to kind of work along the, the thing from up here. So I'm going to insert a table. And let's see, we are going to need um, at least three for the three inputs and then two more columns for the two outputs. 
And then with three inputs, we're going to need a bunch of different rows. So we're going to need two to the three rows after that. So that should be eight. Um, we can't really fit that on here, but we'll just add more rows later. So now what I want to do is let's just select the whole table so that hopefully when we add more rows, it'll do that. Um, trying to center all the text. So we'll select the cells and press Control-E, and now it's all centered. Okay, so we've got A, S, D, and then we've got the, the outputs. Let's call that LED2, LED1. All right, now we'll need to fill up these things with Boolean, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So counting in binary, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. Okay, great. Now, rather than trying to jump right to the output, which we could do once we've got the logical expression pretty, pretty easily, what we can do instead is work on some intermediate things to make it easier to get to the outputs. So let's, um, let's go here, let's say like U1A. U1A, and that is going to be not D at any point. So we've got, based on the D column there, 1, 0, 1, um, let's get some, some numlock going here, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. Then we've got uh, U2A, and that one's not S. So this is 1, 1, 0, 0. One one zero zero, okay, and then LED two is going to be the result of NANDing these two guys together. So think about NANDing. Uh, that's going to give us a zero only when both of these inputs were a one. So that's a zero there, and then we're going to get a one otherwise. We get a zero there, and a one in all of those columns. Okay, and now we can check if that agrees with the logic that we found down here. So we found that that one should be just S or D. And let's check. So we have a zero when those are both a zero, and another zero when they're both zero over there, and a one otherwise. Okay, so that's all good. Perfect. Now, um, some additional, additional operations. Maybe we'll put the other cells kind of in between to keep the outputs at the end. We're going to need U5A. And this one is a NAND between A and, let's see, and U2A. So we're kind of NANDing these two together. All right. So that means we're going to get a 1 unless there's a cell where both of those are 1, like this one or this one right there. Great. So there's, there's that, that's U5A. Then we can go over to the LED1. This final output will be an AND between U5A and the LED2. So that's going to be a 0. And then we're going to get a 1 for all of these cases, and a 1 for those cases, and a 0 otherwise. OK. So now let's check if that agrees with the logic that we had. So that should be A bar D or S. So anywhere that S is a 1, we need an output of 1. And that's those columns there. That makes sense. And then we need anywhere that A is false and D is true, which would be that entry and that entry would also need to be true. So that basically just adds this one to the output. All right, and we're good. So the truth table works, the Boolean algebra works, and, uh, and we've derived both of them independently and then used them to verify each other. Okay, so next part is the multisim. So here's our multisim, and what we're going to do is start adding in all the digital stuff. So we're going to need a bunch of new components that we haven't really dealt with yet. Let's get those in there. So first thing we're going to do is, let's see, we'll get some sources. 
we are going to need uh, these ones that I'm using in the in the problem are these interactive digital constants. You can use other things. You can just use a digital constant that you would set, or you can use a, a, six, a six volt voltage supply. But these interactive ones are a lot of fun. So let's uh, keep with that. And we're going to need a ground, which is in the basic power source uh, menu there. Let's see, for the LEDs later, we're going to need a resistor. So we've got one Ks in the picture. We're going to need also an LED, and that is under diodes, LED, and how about red? Okay, that looks good. Great. Now we're just going to need those gates, uh, the, the logic gates. So specifically, we're looking for the NAND gates, and that's under the CMOS menu, 74 high-speed CMOS 6 volt. And the first one, the 00N, is the NAND gate. Now when you click on this, it brings up a box here with four things, and your first instinct is to say, oh, wait, I must have clicked on the wrong thing. But actually what it's doing is it's pointing out that you get that this particular chip, the 74HC00, has four two-input NAND gates on it. So you can specify whether it's um, the first one, the second one, third one, or fourth one on the chip. And then this will, um, this is, this is something multi-SIM does so that you can use it to generate a, a printed circuit board layout if you match it up with a different, um, if, if you if you combine it with, I think, the, the National Instruments software Ultiboard. I haven't tried that yet, but um, that's basically why they would be bothering to break this up for you. So we're going to need a bunch of those. Specifically, I think we have six gates in... Um, uh, in this particular circuit. Okay, so there's the gates. They don't have to be in the same order that we had. We're going to need two more inputs. We're going to... Let's just wire up the LED to the 1K. And we're going to need these to have a lower on current so that they actually work. If you left it at 5, then it wouldn't have actually um, turned on when we have the, the 6 volts out. Because the 6 volts... Um, well, it might have. It depends on how much of, a, of an output voltage we get. So we need this ground to be moved. We'll put that down there. Okay, and now we'll take that and we'll copy that and put it over there. Then we can wire up these gates. Okay, so let's see. This one's going to be A. And this one is an S. And this one is D. And those are the inputs because those are keys that are close together on the on the keyboard over there. Great. So let's see. We need that connected to there. This one is going to not that. And then we're going to get another gate and NAND those things together. Take this. Um, hmm. Okay, we'll just move that over there. Move that. Oh, the ground is hidden. All right, there we go. And that's the one output, I think. Then we'll take that over to there, and that one into this thing. And then I think we need to do that for the other output. Okay, so I think we've done that right. Let's look back at the circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks good. And now we can check that the logic is actually verified with what we um, with what we wanted. Okay, so we'll run this. And uh, what we expect is that this LED is independent of A. I'm just hitting the A key here, and nothing's happening. But it should be S or D. So if S is on, it's on. If D is on, it's on. If they're both on, it's on. And if they're both off, it's off. 
Great, so that's verified. And now let's check that this logic is correct. So this should be S or not A and D. So if S is on, it's on. If all three are off, it's off. If A is off and D is on, it's on. Um, and if A is on with that, then it's off again unless S is on. So that's that's that logic verified too. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Entries of the truth table verified. Logic works. And we've got some LEDs turning on and off. So there you have it. Now, one last thing is that there is also some, there's also some neat tools for doing logic analyzing in multi-sim that can generate truth tables for you automatically. So if you're interested in exploring those um, beyond this, then by all means, check out things like the logic converter and the logic analyzer. We won't actually need them for this lab, but it can be kind of fun if you want to get ahead and, uh, and try to explore those. Thanks.